everybody knows Tokyo Drift from Fast and Furious series. And today I will go through 5 cars that you can still buy today for reasonable money. Also, we have a Discord channel to talk about cars, so the link is in the description. Go ahead there, join if you want to talk with me with other guys about cars. Help you guy out and subscribe to the channel. Without further ado, let's dig in. In 2003, Nissan unveiled the Fair Lady Z, also known as the 350Z, which took center stage in Tokyo Drift. One iteration, adorned in a dark grey and black color scheme, was driven by Takashi, the renowned Drift King, or DK, Donkey Kong, while the other, driven by Takashi's sidekick, Morimoto, had an interesting yellow, yellowish gold paint job. Takashi's car received quite a few upgrades really for the movie, including top secret G-Force wide body package, making it look really potent and nice in the film, and also recognizing the very good handling capabilities of 350Z, Universal Studios opted not to equip this vehicle with an extravagant D1 spec suspension. I think the original car fetched $130,000 at an auction several years ago, but you can get yourself one, not the exact copy replica, but you can get the base car starting around, what, six to seven thousand euro. Next car today is Nila's RX-8. So Nila's 2004 Mazda RX-8 featured in Tokyo Drift's iconic night drift race, underwent significant modification for its performance. Outfitted with a grandy turbo kit and Tanabe exhaust, the car experienced a marked boost in power, delivering tire-smoking drifts that we all remember. Striking appearance was accentuated by a unique paint job blending bright blue with black hues. Enhancing its aesthetics and aerodynamics, the vehicle boasted a Veilside D1GT body kit, along with custom additions such as painted carbon fiber bonnet or hood and a GT wing. The exact investment done by Universal Studios to RX-8 remains undisclosed. But you can still get your one for, what is it, 6k, 5000, you can get one for 5000 up. Make sure it starts. In a brief yet memorable cameo, a custom yellow 1996 Chaser graces the screen in the film. The Chaser represents the final iteration of its Steam lineage, showcasing the last stage of this legendary car. Well, the exact power lurking beneath its hood remains a mystery. Enthusiasts speculate that this chaser boasts a potent 1JZ GT engine. Well, that's what it came with. Real wheel drive configuration, the powerhouse offered a thrilling driving experience, particularly in drifting. That makes sense because we are in Tokyo Drift Movie. Reiko had a different choice of wheels. Now, it adds a little bit of non-JDM-ness to the entire movie because it was a Golf R32. Allegedly, Volkswagen generously provided the filmmakers with four spanking new 2007 Volkswagen Golfs. First of all, they were offering them tantalizing option to convert the Golfs to rear-wheel drive, but regrettably we didn't get to see that and it was just a Golf. For its brief moment in the spotlight, the vehicle underwent a dramatic transformation, shedding its front-wheel drive configuration for the allure of rear-wheel power. Adorned with scissor doors, reminiscent of Lamborghini, you know, the flappy doors, despite its potential, the changes were more about style and substance, rendering it a mere curiosity. You can get one today for around 12,000 euro or dollars, I think for R32 or a little bit more for that. Yeah, the last car on the list is probably the most quirky one. It's a Twinkies Volkswagen Turan. Probably in real life, it's gonna be probably the most budget-friendly option, since it's a true run. But it certainly doesn't lack in personality. Adorned in vibrant green hue with a Hulk theme, it's very quirky vehicle, steals the spotlights with its distinctiveness. You know, Twinkie, the character who introduces our guy to the drifting scene, drives this exact car. As the green Hulk mobile to run, complete with a striking 3D punch design adorning its size, emerged from a parking garage, it makes people laugh and awe and cry, I don't know. You can tell me about your reaction to that car in the comments, because I was like... Tuning include a custom roll cage, racing seats, and stripped down interior aimed at shedding unnecessary weight for optimal performance, apparently. On the exterior, a bespoke paint job and eye catching decals further cement its status as a standout vehicle in the film. Making this film makes me want to watch the film, so I'm gonna go ahead and do just that. 
See you later. Bye. At least let me drive.